Can We Talk podcast, episode 106, and I have a special guest in the building. You guys may remember her from the original name podcast, Sometimes We Eat, Sometimes We Talk. <laughs> Sierra is back in the building. She's letting me use her real name this time, no pseudonym. Is that what's it called? Pseudonym? Vaughn Taylor? Is that it? That's <laughs> not It's... it's, it's <laughs> A pen name. Oh. A suit name, I believe, is what you were trying to pronounce. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whatever that was. Kava, Kava. Same shit. Yeah, not really. Honestly, <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and say this. I was expecting like a Club Shay Shay introduction, and I thought she was about to roll out all my accolades, so I'm a little disappointed. <clears throat> uh, this is not Club Shay Shay. Um, this is uh, Third Floor Apartment off of Wells Branch. It's a little Ooh, different. Why are you telling people where we at? There's mad apartments on Wells Branch. Mm-mm, that's not safe. Mad floors. That's not safe. <laughs> How are you? I'm, I'm from Baltimore. We'll do stuff like that. <laughs> the ops are coming. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you stay ready. She ain't got to get ready. <laughs> you don't let nobody know where you at until you're gone. Yeah. How are you? Since you want to, <laughs> since you want to be tough. I'm really good, actually. Oh, that reminds me of this joke <laughs> I just seen on Twitter. It was talking about mansplaining. And it was like, ask a man how he's doing. It was like, I'm doing well, actually. <laughs> I thought it was funny. It wasn't funny. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, jump, jump into it. We haven't talked in like a decade, I feel like. Your fault, not mine. You got it. <laughs> You got it. It's fine. Tell me. Say something. What? <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm a guest. See, this is what I'm saying. Like, in all the years that this podcast has been thriving in abundance, I expect more. I expect you to be ready. With ready with what? For me so it's really, I can, this isn't an interview. This isn't your book tour, my friend. That's what I'm saying. So treat me like I've been here before. I am trying like to. Like we friends. I'm trying to. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> You're just being difficult. I'm trying I'm not to. Being difficult. This is not a great You're audio experience. You're just used experience. to being like, so Dottie, why are you single? And just throwing me under the bus the we first. Can, we can ask that again. I think I'm that's actually not single. So, word? Um, nope. As of yesterday, I got a man that's not my man, but that's my man. Oh, okay. So, so name, no name dropping, right? There's that. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to do stuff like that. <laughs> Listen. I'm a very private person, actually. Kind of. Right? No. So, you know what's interesting? Um, there are people who, you know, I'm a, I'm a girl's girl, right? I talk to, I love women, right? I love men too, but I, I love women. I love girls. Like, girls come up, they want to talk to me, whatever. Like, I'm just a friendly person. My chair always calls me friendly. I'm just ready to embrace it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not friendly. I'm nice, but I am friendly. So, um, people... If you really ask somebody questions about me, mm-hmm. they'll realize that they really don't get a lot of information out of me. Like, I'll talk to you. You talk, and I'll, I'll engage. But you're like, hey, w- what about this about her? You're like, I, never asked I actually don't I actually <laughs> don't know that. So, like, there are people who talk to me a lot, but still don't know anything about me. And I do, I'm very strategic with my conversation. Why? What do you mean, why? Why are you like that? Why am I like that? Mm-hmm. Why am I strategic with my conversations? Mm-hmm. Because there's everyone doesn't need to know everything about you. That's a problem with social media. People feel like because they have this access that they're entitled to your life and to your information, and it's just not true. I feel that one thousand percent because I'm the same way. I don't. Yeah. I don't. You can talk to me for hours and don't know shit yeah. about me. Yeah, and walk away and be like, <laughs> I don't know nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, I think it's just some things are best kept sacred. Yeah. Not even best kept secret, best kept sacred. My relationships, I'm talking about. And like my best friends, like my best friends. I seen a meme once and it was like, if your homegirls got asked you who you're pregnant by, you a hoe. But really, they would have to ask me because we don't talk about stuff like that. They'd be like, hey, especially because, you know, in the past, you'd be like, hey, I met somebody. And it'll be later, like, never mind. <laughs> so you just get tired of being like, hey, I like, I like somebody. I met them. And then they're not working out. So now we just got to the point where you're like, hey, y'all might have a brother-in-law in a couple months. I don't know. <laughs> I'll get back to you about it. So there was, uh, I don't know if it was like a debate per se, but like, it, it's a scenario where like, if a person requires you to post them, is that something you're changing about yourself or are you just getting away from that completely? Like, if they're like, hey, why don't you post about me? Why don't you post me? Like, why don't you do this? Are you going to comply with that or just cut that person off? 
Um, so relationships, there's lots of little compromises, right? Relationships mm-hmm. are rituals. I am the same person day in and day out, right? So very early on, you're going to know about me that my social presence on social media and the internet in general, my footprint is very small, right? You see what I want you to see and you're and we'll have that conversation. That's not something that I do, right? And it's not about me like um, not wanting anyone to know who I'm with. The people who need to know will know, right? And if there's something, if, if I was someone who always posts the things that I'm doing, always posts the things that I'm going, always mm-hmm. posts people, and I didn't post you, I could 100% understand you feeling some type of way. But because I don't do those types of things, I'm not going to change that. I'm not. I just don't feel the need to invite people into my my life in that manner. I completely agree with yeah. that. Because why do you need to know? Like, right. what's the purpose of knowing this? Yeah. <laughs> Keep it on a need to know. Facts. What about you? Uh, I, I'm not a social media, like, person outside of pod stuff and food stuff like i kind of like to keep it there yeah versus just posting about the person i'm with i mean i'll post the person i'm with all the time you just won't know i'm with that person Mm -hmm. essentially so i don't have a problem with posting people but i'm not the long paragraph tell you about my day in our relationship kind of guy every other week i honestly and see that's the thing i could go on a whole rant about how much (laughs) social social media has ruined the world as much as it has helped us right Mm -hmm. and i feel like a big part of that, oh, why don't you post me, is the need for recognition. But I feel like what's deeper than that is that you don't feel secure in the relationship that we have. Because my man, I don't care if anybody knows what I look like, right? You know what I look like. <laughs> you and I, like, we should be on the same page mm-hmm. about where we are. And I would hope that I'm with someone who makes me feel secure in the way that they feel about me. I don't need, like, validation is for parking. I don't need anybody you, oh, you've else You've said to be that like, at least on, I think you've said that exactly. Because it's true. On every podcast. It's true. It really is. Validation is for parking. I do not need anybody else to acknowledge that I'm someone who is important to you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just want to figure out what, like, really, really, really what's the root of that, right? Like, I don't know if it's an insecurity. Maybe it's just, like, a normal, I don't even know the word. I don't, like, I think it's a scenario where, like, it's just so normal to post your relationships for everyone else to see, they see you not doing it, and they think something's up or something's wrong, or there's there's something that you're hiding from the relationship. Your opinion and the thoughts that you create about me and the life that I live is not my responsibility to live up to, at all. Facts. <laughs> at all. Uh, in regards to like friendships, I know we haven't talked in a decade. I feel like again. You left me all right. He left that's, me all right, that's not the truth. That's absolutely the truth. He but left it was me like all right. a, it, it was like a period end of conversation like okay hit me up when you have some time is what i was thinking all right in the comments actually you can't even do that on tiktok i was like in the comments i'm gonna put a screenshot of the conversation because that is not i believe you know what the, the, my my two things and and 33 are going to be you got it and i believe that you believe that <laughs> not so I, I believe that you believe that I believe that you believe that you did not leave me on read when you did not respond. I mean, I was, was waiting for you to tell me when you'd be available, I or send me a schedule or something. Like, hey, I'm busy on this, 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 and this, and just send me it. a win. You got it. You don't got to go to TikTok that has to be on the pod, my friend. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not about to argue with you <laughs> because you know me. You know me in real life. <laughs> So, can you tell me what's been going on with you for the last couple of years that we haven't spoke because of you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, life's been really good. So, um, I actually, so I have a couple of mentees now, and um, one of them in particular just changed verticals. And they're like, oh, I just feel like I'm doing myself a disservice. Like, I have this degree, and I went to this great institution, and da 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 da. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, honestly, I went to a performing arts high school for musical theater. I went on to get a bachelor's degree in government. I am now an engineer and I'm getting my MBA. You can change your mind, right? Like, <laughs> and I think that's the great thing about life is that you need to be able to adjust. You need to be able to adjust to the economy, to the market, to interpersonal spaces. I mean, professional and personal growth will require change. Absolutely. And, and adaptation. So, uh, ad- adaptation, <laughs> adaptation. So, yeah, I mean, I'm um, really, my career is beautiful. I'm just thankful to God that I did pivot when I did because my um, my company, I really enjoy my role. It's interesting. I'm So in my 
company, right? I work for a, a tech company that um, s- provides financial software to uh, Microsoft, Oracle, and SAP okay. customers, right? Um, our sales organization globally is about 400 people. Our North American sales organization is about, let's say, 150 people. And the only black woman. The only black woman. Snap louder. Oh, but like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting. So it's not even like, <laughs> I'm the only black woman. It's sad, right? Yeah. So like, and, um, and other roles, right? So like mm-hmm. our solutions engineers, like people in the technical background, like there are a few there. Overall, I want to say maybe there's four of us. But I'm the, we had our, uh, our sales kickoff in Tennessee. I was there for like five days. And people are like, oh, so this lady, <laughs> boy, if I tell you one thing, Game of Thrones, between Game of Thrones and that job that you and I did not work at together, it really prepared me for this very big corporate space that I'm in, right? There is a woman who, um, she's significantly older than me, and she performs very well in her role, right? I have met her four times now, and every single time I meet her, she tries to act like she don't know who I am. <laughs> so we get to Nashville, right? And I get off the plane. Now, mind you, I live in Austin. A lot of people, our North American sales team's headquarters is in Raleigh, so a lot of people are flying in from Raleigh, so they're all on the same flight, right? So I'm going to get my bag, and my VP's like, Dottie. And I didn't know that, I thought he would've came in a couple of days earlier, so I'm trying to like, who knows me? I'm like, oh, hey. So then when he says my name, all these other people are like, oh my gosh, it's so nice to meet you for people that I haven't met before, or oh my goodness, so good to see you again. She chop it on her hand and be like, hi, I'm so-and-so. I just look at her hand, I'm like, I've met you four times. And she goes like this, ooh, girl, it's a power move, right? But I know you know who I am. I know you see all the emails of congratulations, Dottie's team is doing X, Y, and Z. And more importantly, I'm the only black woman. How could you not know who I am? You know what I mean? So it's like stuff like that, like those microaggressions. Like it's um, just so you much. You always got some kind of beef at work. Huh? You always got some kind of beef at work. I don't. You know what it is? <laughs> and I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. There are people who cannot take me, right? And I, I'm a delight. I'm a very kind person. I'm a girl's girl. I'm a guy's guy. Mm-hmm. I just love people, right? I mm-hmm. have a lot of compassion. I have great energy. There are people who cannot handle people like me, right? Someone who don't always have a bad day, somebody who's not walking around with a chip on their shoulder, somebody who other people gravitate to. Mm -hmm. And I get it. I've been a big presence my whole life. And it is now something, a big old about to be 33, that I will not apologize for anymore. Like, if you cannot take me, you can choke. (laughs) Like, my light does not make your shine any less bright you know what i mean but that, that's exactly what it is there are people who just are intimidated by me and i can't do anything about it i embrace people i, I show more love <laughs> i show so many people so much love like it's just like a natural thing yeah. for me you know what i mean so like when i don't get it back like at this big old age of mine i just understand like it's about you it's not about me absolutely right? yeah it's, it's about you so i mean it's not that i like especially like at that place that we did not bring it together <laughs> If you didn't like me, you was throwing up every day because I was on the wall. My picture was on the website that my name was in emails. Like there is nowhere in that building, in that organization, you did not see my name. So if you didn't like me, you was choking. I can't do nothing about it. Oh, I'm man. somebody who's always going to outperform, outshine. And that's just because of the goals and the pillars that I set for myself. I'm competing against me and nobody else. The older version of me. <laughs> That's it. What a time. <laughs> I just remember all the conversations. Like it's 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 crazy how long ago that was. I mean, hey. <laughs> what can you do about it? What's hey, her nobody n- gonna smack me? <laughs> <laughs> What's uh I don't remember her name, but she was on the pod before. Um I'm not gonna. I don't. What is her name? I don't want to say her name, but I can't think of her name. But she was not my best friend. Who? The one that was in the background. Wait, what? Wait, I, I'm gonna let you finish your statement. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, no, just, we we work with them both. They're sisters. Sisters. Yeah, one was in our group that we didn't work in, and another one was in another group. 
I, 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 start, they both start with an S. <laughs> I really don't know who you're talking about. That's crazy. But I, w- I was only saying that to say that they're still mixed up into that transition. Like when that place we didn't work at closed and went somewhere Can you else. Type the name to me. Who's <laughs> going to, I'm not going to be able to move past it. I don't know her name. I'm sorry for not knowing your name because you were on the pod. For Halloween, did a Halloween episode. I was a blockbuster employee. It was lit. What? <laughs> I was a blockbuster employee. We dressed up on the pod for Halloween. I wasn't here. I know. I'm not saying you were. So I'm really trying to figure out who you're talking about. <laughs> Sometimes I can't remember things and it worries me. I'm like, am I getting old? <laughs> okay, Let me see if I can me. find it. You'll you'll know. You know who I'm talking about. You just don't know. Sisters. Oh, got you, got you. Yeah, they came on the pod, and okay, um, yeah, I like them. They're still they're still in the mix with the company that the the company we didn't work at transitioned okay. to. Okay, yeah, I like them though. <laughs> yeah, one of the few, some of the few. Listen, I sh- I show love to who show love. To. I show love to everybody. I show extra love who show love to me. They never did me wrong. Dong, wrong. Wrong. Yeah. What you been up to? Nothing. Just working. Like I, I left Legal Zoom, not by choice. <laughs> How do you keep putting out? You, you just share too much information. I mean, it's the truth. I don't work for them anymore. It doesn't matter. I'm not saying anything bad about them. Listen, it's not even about saying nothing bad. I'm one of those people. Like you see them post and they be like, "Oh, I can't find this about him," and your friend be like, "Give me five minutes." That's me. Like, I, mean, I can that's find fine. anything it's, about it's, you with very little information. It's not a secret. Like, it's not a like, secret that I work there. Okay. It was encouraged for us to tell people we work there oh, okay. to do sales because I've worked in sales there. Gotcha. Um, so you got let go? I did. Did it they, did. Um, was it reorganization or? It was a mixture of both. It was like performance and letting people go. They cut, I think, like half the management team at that time. Yeah. Um, Usually management is the first to go when they have to do things like that because they make the most money. Mm-hmm. That actually just happened three months in my current job. So, okay. Well, yeah. I'm really happy in this economy that you were able to bounce back so quickly. Facts. It's it's weird. Like, in the middle of moving... It was actually... It happened in the middle of moving here. <laughs> like, I requested two weeks off, and it happened right before the two weeks. Every time I think about <laughs> you and moving, I think about... <laughs> that witch. Oh, that witch. You know what's funny? Me and my best friends were talking about... So, you seen that Risa Tisa stuff? I heard about it. I haven't. I didn't dive I didn't into it. the my, my nine hours. Allow me to watch anything. nine hours. No, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. Especially when I'm still un- not unpacked in my house. Like absolutely <laughs> not. Right. So, um, me and my best friend were talking about like, oh, like I wish that I was not such a private person because, baby, I don't have stories like that. Like, I would not let a man drag on me like that. But I definitely had some crazy stories. But that story <laughs> that I'm talking about with you, that is a hilarious story. It's been told many, many times. It's just, yeah. it, it's, it's, Whatever it's. Whatever happened to her? I, I said that and literally at the second I said it, I was like, I really don't even care. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> makes two of us. Yeah, don't care. <laughs> I actually ran into her mom's a couple of weeks ago or maybe a month and a half ago. And she was like really nice because she's a really nice person, but she doesn't know her daughter's a demon. But I, I just, I gave her a hug and said, hey, how you doing? But didn't ask how she was doing or anything like that because yeah, I care less. Don't care. Yeah. She took the shower curtain, guys. I've learned. <laughs> and the Christmas tree. She, <laughs> <laughs> she's she, this. She took the trash can. <laughs> and put the trash on the floor. <laughs> guys, this is the first person I called Ooh. when that happened. <laughs> And it was so funny because he was walking around the apartment, shit. just discovering new stuff. Like she took the shower curtain. She honestly, that little bitch was funny because she took the most inconvenient shit things. ever. Like that was hilarious. <laughs> that was hilarious. Like somebody had did a post about that on Twitter before. Like what's something that she would do? Like basically same thing. Like I would take one of all these socks. <laughs> I would take. The tool, the paper, like I would just take very inconvenient things. That was nuts, man. I changed my locks. That was something that you told me to do, and I did yeah. it the next day. Yeah. <laughs> Never seen her again after that. So that, that worked out for me. People really be blocking their blessing. Like I really believe in karma. 
And the thing that people don't understand about karma is that karma comes back to you the way it's going to hurt you. So she's not going to have somebody who's going to ransack her apartment and take all the things that you, she's going to need on a daily basis. Whatever way it's going to hurt her, that's how it's going to come back. And she's going to see your face. Oh, that witch. I don't even use a, I don't even call her the B word. She's a witch. It was like witchcraft. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> she be having stones and stuff. <laughs> She be charging her crystals in the moonlight. She, whatever she did, it got me in the relationship. Uh, whatever witchcraft she had, it was a relationship. So, yeah, fuck her. Fuck her. <laughs> That's so funny. I haven't even thought about that story in, like, years because it's, it's just it's funny. Like, I, yeah. I'm actually happy to have gone through that so that I have something to talk about. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, like... These things keep life colorful, right? Facts. I was just talking to someone maybe a week or two ago. I think it was on the pod, or maybe it was. I pre- just want to point out that he talks to people, which means that he responds to somebody. It just wasn't me. <sighs> Carry on. I was talking to someone that we had clear communication with, that I had clear communication with, and um, I was talking about like all the really bad experiences that you went through, that you got through. A lot of times, like being able to talk about those experiences is like cool it's like gratifying or satisfying is that the word satisfying it's healing and you i would have rather gone through, through those things of your bad days oh you said that's your line too mm-hmm. you need a book of lines so it's interesting i have um back when my dad was uh sick when he was in hospice i had a friend named bj and he started sending me daily like uh motivational like messages and then it got to a point where he was he was inconsistent, right? Like, it'd be like some days he ain't send him. Mm-hmm. So then I started like thinking about my own, and then I started meditating in the mornings. So at this point, it's been three years, and I um, it started with like I would just send like my mother and my sisters and like my best friends like the messages that he would send me, and then mm-hmm. like as I would have conversations with people, and I'd be like, oh yeah, I do this. They be like, add me. Now I've had to purchase an app because there's <laughs> almost a hundred people that I send this daily message to. Um, I'm not so, one of them, by the way. You're not. <laughs> The conversation. I don't just correctly <laughs> add people like it just so happens that it comes up. It's funny because I have like a friend. She is significantly older than me. She's probably I feel like she's almost as old as my mom, if not older. And she's like one of my best friends. I met her on an airplane on my way to Raleigh actually <laughs> for a work event. And um, she's on the list. Uh, like people, just random people that I meet because like I don't. It's coming from my phone number, but because I pay for the app, like I'm not physically texting them every day. But like it's just really mm. beautiful this little community of positivity and light that we have created. And um, it's been going on for three years now. Um, And I told myself, I was like, I'm going to take all of them and put them together in a book. You should. Yeah. Those one-liners be lit. So I do voice messages, too. People be mad at me because they're like, we want more voice messages. I'm like, (laughs) uh, but see, the voice messages, the app does not support. So I have to send each and every one of those individually. Yeah, it's a lot. lot With your travels, has there been a place that you've traveled to that was unexpectedly like fire food wise nashville nashville is good i did not think that nashville was gonna be as fun as it was Mm -hmm. so you know me like i'm just like multicultural like love different types of music like Mm -hmm. different types of food i had a ball in nashville a ball so kid rocks if y'all ever go to uh nashville it's a bar on um what's it called broadway called kid rocks i felt like i was at a rock show like they put it on like it was so much fun. The energy was crazy. And we had a ball. Like, everybody mm. in there, under any other circumstance, you know, you could probably tell everybody was there, like, on some type of work event. Like, it's like, you could <laughs> tell everybody was there with their coworkers in some sort of fashion. But we had a ball. Like, they uh, were covering different songs. That, like, you just could not tell them. Like, that was not their original, like, set. Like, it was amazing. I had a great time in Nashville. I actually have a really good friend. Um, that I went to college with who's there now. I didn't get to see him there because, you know, conferences, like, mm-hmm. they pretty much have your whole life schedule. But, yeah, I definitely want to go back to Nashville. And I'm about to open up a Hattie B's here. Really? Mm-hmm. Do you know what that is? Nashville Hattie so, Hattie B's? Yeah. Yeah. I, my family's actually, my well, my dad's side of the family is from Mississippi and Tennessee area. So, every summer we'd go to Nashville. We'd go to uh, not the places you think of in Mississippi like Jackson, but... It's a really small, poor town out there. But, like, I I love the energy out there. But they be robbing folks. Yeah, well, I could, listen, <laughs> Mississippi too south for me. Too south for me. Mm-mm. Do you consider Texas the south? Absolutely. 
Alexis. So I had so I had a I had a person come on. She's from born and raised North Carolina. She moved down here a couple years ago. She's a, a principal at a school and she does not consider Texas the South. She says she doesn't feel the southern hospitality. Well your feelings and the map are two different things. Thank you. Because Dora the Explorer will tell you <laughs> that it's the South. And that's not even because I'm from the North. It is very much the South. Thank you. Yeah. I'm clipping this for sure and sending it right to her. Yeah. <laughs> Ma'am. And for you to be a principal, you at minimum have your master's degree. And I feel like you at least have to have your doctorate. So it's not good look. <laughs> okay. Texas is the South. Cool. <laughs> That's Very funny. Much so. That's funny. Because I mean, I, I see a lot of, our, I speak to a lot of people who aren't from here, like transplant wise, because I, I don't want to talk to people I grew up with, to be honest with, with people for the most part. And they have that same kind of idea of this not being the South with it being Austin. I believe they believe that. Because <laughs> <laughs> we went to, um, we went to Rainy Street last weekend or weekend before, and there was just so many like buildings being built at the same time. It looks like nothing south related it just looks big and and what's the industrialized is that a word it just looks nuts so i can understand someone's perception of austin and texas if they're only in that mix yeah but see that's more of a cultural thing than it is a geographic because texas is the south it literally boards mexico right (laughs) so if you're talking about the feel of southern haspa hospitality um, then I can understand like Austin being like a more of a progressive city and you feel like, okay, mm-hmm. it's a bunch of skyscrapers now. Ooh, wop, ooh, wop. Like, okay, it's, it's more of a big city feel. Everybody moving here from different places. They're not as hospitable and as kind as we are. I can understand that aspect. But if you're talking about the South, it is South. It's literally <laughs> the bottom of the United States. What did I say? Didn't Make I say that? that? It's the Southern. You can't go any more Southern. Yeah, you cannot. She classified North Carolina as more South than, than Texas. So it sounds like she was talking about um, culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and again, to each his own, right? everybody has their own opinion. <laughs> but no. Texas is the South. We, we just solved the mystery. Texas yeah. is the South. It's crazy to me that that was a question, but. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? Right. No, you're right. It's cultural. And it's also like, where do you, where you be at? Like, where are you? Yeah. Now, it's interesting because, you know, I'm from Baltimore, mm-hmm. and my niece lives with me. She's from Baltimore. My sister's from Baltimore. Like, we're all here now. And they like- Oh, the family moved? The whole family? So, my oldest sister moved here with her three boys. She's almost in July, be two years. Mm. Um, yeah, and, and my niece is with me. She actually graduated high school six months early. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> um, I just seen on Twitter earlier, so I was like, my idea of being a mother is being an aunt. <laughs> Period. <laughs> um, so, yeah- they they all came down here. It was kind of culture shock. They're like, people are so nice. And like, they're so friendly. And like, it kind of freaked my niece out. Cause she's like, why is everybody talking to me? I said, because they're kind. Because they're nice. <laughs> yeah. Because like in Baltimore, don't get me wrong, people aren't rude. Mm-hmm. They're just not outwardly like, hey, how you doing? Like, you yeah. look at somebody, you smile. They might smile back. You yeah. say hello, they say hello. But they're not going to stop. When people in Texas, they say, hey, how you doing? They want to answer. Yeah. They look at you crazy like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> you, you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> they get a little. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's nuts. I didn't know the, the whole family moved down here or whatever. Yeah. I remember last time I spoke to you, you were transitioning to having your niece uh, move in with you. Yep. And a transition it was indeed, but you know, she is doing great. She's learning how to drive right now. She already got a car. So we're doing big things. She's about to go to school. And um, in the fall, so I'm just really proud of my baby. She she did that. She so did that. what have you been eating lately? Like not lately, but like what some places that you've tried for the first time that you've just. I'm almost scared to tell you all this because the second <laughs> things get so hot, then prices go up. Then it's too quality busy. of can't food. Get, yeah, can't ever get in. Munch munch, waffles and more. Listen, y'all. I know you see the double chin. <laughs> Like, and I always go in there. And it's so funny because I went on a first date in there, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, y'all, I'm bringing somebody here next weekend. Y'all got to act like y'all know me, right? <laughs> but because I'm just like so <laughs> enthusiastic about the menu. <laughs> he's like, you've been here before. And I couldn't even lie. I was like. Munch, munch. Where's it at? Wait, where? It's um in Liberty Hill. Is that Georgetown? No. It's Liberty Hill. 
The, the zoning out there is very close to Georgetown. Um, what the, you looked that up? But Munch Munch Chicken and Waffles, shameless plug. Um, <laughs> it's really good. It's black owned, um, veteran owned, and they are so kind, so kind. Like it's I, when I tell you I'm in there all the time. I'm in there at least twice a week, and like they acknowledge that I'm in there twice a week. They're you know talking to me about the menus, their things. Like they're just people, people, and you feel good. And like everybody's in there. Like there's no just like oh it's black owned, it's only black people in there. Like. Everybody goes there and patrons their establishment, and I just love that because the food is amazing. What's the best? Oh, thing? actually, I just went this weekend and had their shrimp and grits, and it was better than yours. I hate to say it, I don't. I'm we can, I, I can run it back. I'm a better. I mean, I'm, I'm excited a, I'm a, to tell you. I'm a you. well better. I'm a way better chef than I was then. Are you? Yeah, absolutely. That's wonderful that you keep working in crab. It's something you're very passionate about. I love absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, it was better than yours. Yeah, we can run it back. Yeah. I'll change your mind. But that would that be what you would recommend someone to get? The shrimp and grits? The shrimp and grits, the berry love, the um everything. Just everything. I have not had a bad thing there. Even the ketchup, just <laughs> <laughs> How'd you hear about it? So when my mother um when I went to go close on my house, my mother came in the day after I closed. So we were unpacking. Actually no, we weren't unpacking. We were just in the house. And she was like, I'm hungry. I'm like, okay. And she's like, I want breakfast food. I'm like, it's one o'clock. So I was like, all right, cool. So I just looked up breakfast and it popped up. It was on like, um, I don't want to say how far it was from my home, but <laughs> it was pretty close. So I was like, okay, cool. And they're open that late? They're, um, they're open like late, late? No, sir. It's a it's a breakfast brunch spot. So they close at um, two. Gotcha. Yeah. Did Four you know, days. like, <laughs> I just learned this other day that Waffle House was taking reservations for Valentine's Day. They had like a little set up table. <laughs> it's, That's cute. Tr- it's true. That's cute. What would you feel? How would you feel if someone wanted to take you to Waffle House for Valentine's Day? My man? Wh- whomever. Whomever. First of all, you're my Valentine. <laughs> you most likely my man. And if you're my man, I don't care if you take me to McDonald's. <laughs> Where are we going? Okay, cool. Love that place. I'm going to go. So, Happily. So I know you've probably seen the the list of restaurants that women refuse to go on the first Listen, date. I'm glad you brought that up because I, don't, I you know I'd be like ghosting on Twitter. Like I'd be on Twitter. I don't got that many followers anyway. But like I don't really be talking about. I don't really chime into because my grandmother told me a lot of time a long time ago. Don't speak about things you don't care about, right? Mm-hmm. And to me, like a lot of that stuff is broke banter. Like people are like oh I don't like people to do this. I don't. Like, you couldn't do it if you wanted to. <laughs> Of course you don't like it, right? But when it comes to these relationship things, first of all, these skits, y'all got to stop with these skits. There are local theaters everywhere. Go join one. I'm so tired of these. Oh my gosh, this random moment y'all just happened to catch in 4K, staring at the camera like, please. You know that that like meme of that lady going, oh, like that's how I feel every time I see, what is this tag? Stop touching my tags. Oh, <laughs> my bad. You ain't run down the house rules. But yeah, so these relationship conversations I feel like are very silly. It's the same way where like guys be guys and women be online like, oh, I only talk to a guy look like this. I only want a woman look like this and your baby mother don't don't meet none of that description. The, well, the I've grown. last four men who have <laughs> drug you through the mud don't look nothing like that, don't make that type of money. Like you're not, you know. So these conversations where people are like, I would never go there, I would never do this. First of all, I personally feel like anything is a date with the person that you're really interested in. If my and I'm I don't want to say I'm low maintenance, but I'm someone who really truly enjoys spending time with people. Um, which is interesting because uh quality time is not my primary two like love languages, but it's important to me. I feel like everybody needs like a happy medium of all of them, right? Mm-hmm. But anywhere that me and my man want to go is a date. Like when we're spending intentional time together, like, hey, we're doing this together. That's a date. You want to go to Chick-fil-A, especially because you like to eat. <laughs> when you take me somewhere I like to eat, we ain't got to do a whole hoop, bunch of hoopla. I ain't got to get real dressed. Like, please, first of all, y'all go to Cheesecake Factory. Have you ever had them corn tamales at Cheesecake Factory? I haven't. Whew, baby. I'm getting the please same thing. Please take me to Cheesecake Factory and take me during happy hour so that I can get it for half price. <laughs> Thank you, Bay. Smart, financially feasible. What? That's my man, my man, my man. Yeah, he's smart. I like that. I make a lot of money. I want to keep it. 
paying half price. <laughs> yeah, people, these people broke banter. Yeah, I, I just like it's really as simple as that. Like, deal with people who actually like you. Like, it's really that simple. And if someone you're dealing with actually likes you, you're good to go. Listen, my ex boyfriend, we went to different universities in undergrad. Um, he went to a HBCU in Baltimore. I went to a HBCU in Prince George's County, Maryland. <laughs> Shout out to Bowie State. So he had a um, a two bedroom like campus apartment, mm-hmm. but he never had a roommate. And then like randomly, he ended up having a roommate. So like I came over one night, and he's like, "Hey, like you know, we ain't gonna be in a bedroom because I was spending the night." He was like, "Because I have this new roommate. Like I just came home today, and he was like moving in." So like he literally. Like, was like, all right, go get this food. Like, put it in order. Like, go get this food, come back. I'm going to have it figured out, right? He took, like, his bed out of the, the bedroom and put it in the living room and made, like, this little, like, tent thing from, like, one couch to the other and, like, <laughs> had little candles. And, like, it was just so cute. And, like, we literally, like, slept on the floor. <laughs> and I was just so happy. I was like, this is just so nice. <laughs> like, so, yeah, when people like you. They'll do things for you. Yeah. <laughs> Please. And let's be clear, the people who say they don't want to go to Cheesecake Factory don't want to go because it's the only place anybody ever took them. <laughs> Cheesecake Factory no, again? You wouldn't know parties if it hit you, on, <laughs> if it slapped you on the ass. <laughs> anyway, that's my two cents. Cava, cava, what what are you ordering? Like, what are you getting? <laughs> I don't know. It's a lot of carbs. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to be on my, my little car. Yo, see the chin. But yeah, no, so... um. Kava, I really like I really like lamb, but um, I don't had their get lamb, lamb when I get. Huh? I've never had their lamb. I, so I've had their lamb before. I wasn't that crazy about it. I really like the harissa uh, sweet, the harissa honey chicken. So I get that. I get double pickle onions, double cucumbers, um, olive. Do you do the, just a plain rice bowl, or do you do like yeah. the the grains and the, the leaf? I, I get the grains. Um, the harissa, that um, that dip, whew, so good. I don't be knowing the names of the dips. The I just know one. exactly what they look like. Yeah, it's so the I just red like one. that the one. The red one. I'm like all three because you get three scoops of like all three harissa on the side though, and then I get the toasted pita. That's what I was over there smashing because I knew you wasn't gonna feed me. <laughs> At least you got food, right? You knew. I was smart enough. I've yeah. so many times. We gotta plan something. I'm gonna do. I, I want to plan something food wise. It's been a while. I've been. I've been busy, yo. You know, it'd be cute. So my man, that's not my man. It is my man. He's about to get deployed. So it would be nice. Um, now I think about because you know I cook a lot. I actually don't eat out that much. But it would be nice if maybe like we had like a night where like you came to my new beautiful house, my big old kitchen, and cooked for us. I wouldn't be opposed to that. I actually offered that for Valentine's Day, and everyone is fucking single. And had nobody to actually do it. I just did it for myself. <laughs> I mean, I could Listen, all the time. date yourself, people, ladies and gentlemen. Date yourself. Date yourself. That way, when people just track them to the bare minimum, you be like, I could do this on my own. Next, you can you can weed it out real real quick. That's why I'm real big on doing things for the kids. Mm. Like, I don't believe in oh kids can't eat this. No, my niece wants a lobster tail. Yes, because I don't want no little boy. To give you a lobster tail for the first time. He doing something. And then, yeah, and now he feel like he could drag on you and treat you any type of way. And you feel like, oh, well, he's the only person. No. You want lobster? Got it. (laughs) Do you remember when, do you, I don't know if this was something that was outside of Texas, but do you remember Walmart having the live lobster, like, tell, not, live lobster tub thing, like, in the middle of the seafood aisle? Mm -hmm. Okay. Someone called me crazy for remembering that. I'm like, I vividly, vividly remember my dad going up to the counter and be like, yeah, let me get three of them. And the employer would walk over there with like um, a big old glove because the pinchers were like, mm-hmm. had rubber bands on oh. it or whatever. And then like, just pick out as many. And it was like seven or eight dollars a pound yeah. for a whole live lobster. Do you remember that? Now, um, the Mandela effect is very real. <laughs> So maybe that's just not the timeline they're living in. But yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and, I, and then I don't know if that was something that was across the U.S. or if yeah, it was, yeah. or if it was something that was regional or something like that. But that's nuts. Live lobsters in Walmart. That's yeah. nuts. Ooh, and I'm just thinking that would be real nice too because I got motorized blinds. <laughs> they be like Alexa, set the tone. <laughs> Light some candles. Have you come across any food places that you tried for the first time that you weren't? Really, that interested in? Let's just be clear. It's very little food my fat ass don't like. Okay. <laughs> um, 
So good folks, like I was telling you, it's a re- the restaurant was really really good. I enjoyed a lot of things we got. Their chicken was underwhelming to me, and that's what their thing is supposed to be mm-hmm. like. Their chicken. So um, again, that's just my preference. It was not bad. It just didn't live up to the expectation that was set for this to be like their staple food. Um, but other than that, no. There's some places I want to try. I want to try Tater Q. I keep hearing about that. I've had it. So that place used to be another. A uh, baked potato place called Stuff 'em. They went out of business and they took them. <laughs> <laughs> they took that over, but it, it's pretty good. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I just heard black. Oh, you know, I just love black stuff. You should try uh, anything. Is everything or anything baked? It's one of the two. Is it ev- any anything baked potato? It's black owned too. Mm, it's really good. Now. When I was vegan, it was very easy for me because mm-hmm. it's easier for me to give up meat. Than carbs, potato. I love potatoes. Like me and my best friend will have a whole conversation about French fries. Like I love potatoes. So yeah. There used to be this. Um, I, I don't know if this is not the case now, but there is a place in Barton Springs Mall, Barton, Barton Creek, Barton Creek. I don't remember. Uh, but it was like a it's a fry kiosk thing that just had none but fries, just cut different ways. Mm. Yeah. You remember? Do you remember? I don't know if it's still there. Hmm. I tried the uh, so this allegedly is the best burger in Austin is N D C A, not a damn chance, right? Yeah, not a damn chance. This is a burger place that just opened up maybe a couple months ago. They have two locations, one on Rainy Street and then one on I think Six or something like that. It was it was mid, but it was Austin. It was voted Austin's best burger. You know what else was mid and everybody be raving about? Tommy Wingy or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? They got like the wing lollipops. Wingy something. I feel here? like it's Tommy Wingy, but Wingy something. I was like, these are not that great. That's here? Mm-hmm. It's a food truck uh, south. Tommy Wingy? Yeah. Have you been going out like nightlife stuff? Like No. Honestly, um, in this phase of my life... I am really locked in, right? Um, my career is going well. Like I said, my, <laughs> I'm holding on to my 4.0 for dear life, okay? <laughs> so um, I'm just really locked in. Like um, Things are, are going really well for me professionally and personally. And there really isn't anything outside I'm interested in. You know what I mean? Like, So it's definitely good to like when my best friends came, um, we stumbled upon a, uh, a random, like uh, what's it called? Silent Disco. At like Ice House or something like what is it called? It like um, like the, with the headphones, with yeah. the headphones on, and yeah, we're just like listening Ice to House, the music. Rainy Street. We had like a ball. We had a really good time. So there are definitely things that I have done, um, but you gotta remember, I um, went to a HBCU, partied really hard, and then I lived in Las Vegas for three years. Like I have partied. I don't want to say like I'm not old. You know what I mean? Like I, I partied out, but I definitely am in a place where like okay, I've had a lot of fun. And now it's time for me to like really get serious about the things that I'm doing um, so that I can have more fun, but also have an opportunity to like to, to balance both. But I will say that I do believe that I have good work life balance, which is important to me um, because there was a time in my life where I did not prioritize that. And I lost a lot of things that that money could not give back to me. Right. So I'm definitely happy that I have learned um, to prioritize that in my mental health as well. Yes. Okay. Tommy want wingy. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that good. And it was mad expensive. Twelve wings was like eighteen dollars. I'm like, y'all smoking dick. That's, but yeah, that's tough. Um, <clears throat> I don't. Is, is the new of uh, the next book a thing already? Like, is that already yeah, in play? Yeah. So very similar to my first book. When I put out my first book, I had enough material for my second book. But because I am not someone who does marketing, which is why in my MBA coursework, I'm excited to take that market, my marketing class because it's just not something I'm good at. Um, I wanted to have a successful marketing business strategy so that I would have something that was tried and true when I go to put out the second book and just get over all the past woes of like the first one. Because my first book, I think I've sold a little under 400 copies. I've sold a book to probably everybody that I know, right? And that's wonderful. I love the support. I thank you a million times. But a lot of those people also just bought the book out of support and they don't plan on reading it. And the way that I feel, and I hate to sound ungrateful when I say this, but I wouldn't have cared if I only sold one book if it was going to be someone who was going to read it, right? Um, Because I like 
the people that have read it have given me feedback like oh my gosh like you I feel like the biggest compliment someone gave me is that you put words to a feeling that I've had for years and I just could not express it I couldn't put it into words like you gave me words that my soul has been seeking and I was like wow like as a writer like just like any type of creative like that was like amazing I was like the mm -hmm. biggest compliment anybody's ever given me right that means so much to me especially because I don't were you on the book release yeah when remember zoom, that girl was on the zoom right yeah remember yeah. the girl so there was a girl I can't think of her name but um there's a, a so I really struggled with mental health um in undergrad I had lost several friends back to back I literally buried five people in a six month span one of them being my boyfriend and when my boyfriend passed away I just like lost my mind literally I just couldn't handle it um so in that struggle of that battle of depression there was a time where I was suicidal I was like this grief is just too much like I cannot handle it and there was a piece that I wrote it's called parallel that was talking about my battle with um those thoughts and those feelings just like I don't know where these thoughts are coming from. Like, I feel like today I'm okay. But like, literally, like these intrusive thoughts are just telling me like, you, you're not okay. Like, just let this go. Right. And she just started crying. And like, I, it wasn't even in the plan of the, the pieces that I was going to share that night. Mm -hmm. But something was just like, you should read this one. So like, okay. So I did it. And like, she literally came off the mic and she was like, oh my gosh, that spoke to me so much. And she was like, I'm just having such a hard time. And it was such a beautiful moment because all of my friends and like family, nobody even knew her. A lot of them didn't even know each other. They all came off of the, the mute and they were like, oh, Libby, that's her name. She was a, uh, at the company that we were, didn't work at together. She was she, in uh, the other department. She um, actually helped with my pilot episode of the podcast. Yeah. She's a sweet girl, right? So she, so imagine she's a sweet girl, right? And she was very quiet. And she had literally just got to that place that we didn't work together, right? She, I didn't even know her like that. Like, I was just talking to her one day and she was like, uh, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, actually, I'm having a book release, like a virtual book release. And she's like, oh, I'd like to come. And she came, right? So just God in the universe, just moving things around. So like everybody, like all my friends went back home, like all over, like, oh, you got this. Like, no, we want you here. Like, it'll be fine like just pouring into her like it was just such a beautiful thing like i gotta find a recording for that um you saved them that book release well because it was on zoom so mm. they sent it to me but like it was like one of the best nights of my life and that was just i feel like if nothing else happened on that night there could have been a different end to her story right but she just had people that just gave her confirmation and like no you're you're worthy of being here like you're deserving of love and kindness and all these other things like it just was it was crazy gave me chills i was like wow shout out to her she for her and her brother actually came on like it was it was crystal's ideal i think at the time but uh her and her little brother came on and we just did it we just did an episode i think it's like 30 40 minutes long just to see what it could look like mm -hmm. it was never going to be released it was that just was to see I was involved? um maybe after maybe i don't i don't know i don't remember i only asked because you said that it was the first episode so it would have been it would have been the first episode of this pod not the one that we was oh okay gotcha so then yeah. it was that okay which we did have we we, we almost we started <laughs> and then the pandemic like we started a pod technically and then things just kind of went a different direction yeah but you said so when you say this pod i thought you meant under the name the can we talk? No, no, so no, this pod. So it would have been the first filming of this pod. Because after the original, the sometimes we eat, sometimes we talk podcast, mm -hmm. I just changed the name. So I wanted to, I wanted it to look a little different. Right. So that's what I'm agreeing with you. Like, okay, oh. so this was like, yeah, the this can pod. we talk? Okay, yeah, gotcha. yeah, this pod. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Yeah, they came out. It was cool. I think How come you got headphones on? I don't got headphones. You don't need them. You don't need them. What do they do? I just want to make sure the audio is good. You don't need them. So how am I supposed to know the audio? What if y'all can't hear me? I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, know, is that like, and I've broken I like I, got a cool I, have, I have mad broken headphones at this point. So yeah, that also is a factor as well. It's fine. I just noticed. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you got something I don't have. Interesting. Daddy hats. You got it. <laughs> you got it. So you know what I'd like to know? I didn't have any questions for you originally, but something I, w I would like to know. Uh-huh. 
So, um, in your, if you could pick like a word, right? So like I have a really good girlfriend, her name is Jazz. She has a, shameless plug, she has a, um, she's a career coach and she has a uh, company called Charisma. Charisma, so like a play on word of career and charisma, right? Um, and she actually created this wonderful book. It's, it's a vision board magazine, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it really changed the whole trajectory of last year for me. Like the first page, actually, I made it to talk about it. The first page is like um, a year in review. So that's you like, hey, what's three things you accomplished last year? Something you did well, something you want to work on. What are your goals for this upcoming year, right? And you pick a word. My word for last year was onward. And when I looked up at the vision board that I made, out of um, that magazine that she has, and it's like really cool because like it's for mm -hmm. all people, but right. So there's like all these different like pictures. It's like fitness and love and travel and all these other things, right? And like affirmations. So mine was about this big, right? And um, I had it right in front of me at my desk, and like it was so cool because at the end of the year, it was like I did that, I did that, I did that. I went here, I went here, I went here. Like it was just like so wonderful to be able to be like, yeah, like, um, and I feel like that's part of the reason why this year has been off to a rocky start for me because I haven't been very intentional with the plans that I have for myself for 2024, right? I feel like the, the months are just flying by. So I definitely need to do that before um, the month is over. Anyway, um, but it's a word that you pick, right? So my mm -hmm. word last year was onward. And anytime I would feel frustrated or I feel like something was just taking up too much of my attention and I was just getting stuck in a space there where I wasn't productive and more importantly, like I just could not move on, I'd be like onward. And just it really helped me. So what what is your word for twenty twenty four? Pivot. Ooh. Yeah, I, I think you know, that you know I believe in that. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that like with and especially like the podcast and cooking and is being in this space like i've had to pivot a lot and that's usually the word i use to to not i don't want to say not worry but like that's the word that comes to mind anytime there's some kind of like uh issue or something's not going the way i want it to it's just like those pivot moments like losing a job in the middle of a move like what are you going to do like either you're going to stop working all together and, and fuck up shit or you're going to actually just try to figure the shit out get a second job, get another job, do, do whatever the fuck you got to do. So I would use the word pivot. I like sure. that. I like that a lot. Pivot. What about you? Stitch. <laughs> what do you say? Stitch. I don't get it. <laughs> oh, that is my favorite movie. <laughs> Lilo and Stitch. That's like my comfort. My comfort movie is Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> yes. Oh, actually, I don't, I don't know who that is, but... <laughs> That must be 627, because they ain't 626, <laughs> but, <laughs> but Lilo and Stitch, Ohana, what? Nobody gets left behind or forgotten. Period. Yeah. <laughs> Stitch. <laughs> it's my dog. I think my word, the first, when you brought that up, the first word I could think about was progress. So, just the word that not only just means to keep moving forward, but also to keep growing at the same time. Absolutely. Absolutely. So one of the messages from last week um, was just talking about like um, not being afraid to let go of the things that you have, right? Because if you can't imagine losing things you never thought you would lose, you also can't imagine gaining things you never thought you could gain, right? And sometimes those things are synonymous. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Th those are those are great words. I feel like. Onward is definitely something like a word I'm going to keep. Mm -hmm. But I, I've been talking to myself for the last couple of days, like, what is my my focus of 2024? Like, what is my word going to be? And I feel like as I'm saying this out loud, it should be trust, right? Because so many times, just like um, it's a defense mechanism. Like, I'm just so skeptical of things and like so guarded with certain things. I'm just like, when things feel too easy or it's too good to be true, I just yeah. won't let them. I won't let them be good, right? Even like with the man that I'm dating, like I'm like, oh, he feels too good to be true. Maybe he just really is good, right? <laughs> like don't, I don't, I just have to trust that, um, that I'm deserving of good things. Like I tell everybody all the time, right? Like I tell people, these morning messages, it, they come to me when I'm meditating. 
I'm like, I'm really talking to myself. I just know that y'all have expressed that y'all like to hear him, so I share with y'all too. <laughs> like, I'm always talking to myself. I'm like, yeah, I'm deserving of good things, of love, of growth, of compassion, all these things. So, like, when God and I call to the universe and say these are the things that I want, when they come to me, I can't be like, oh, nah. <laughs> like, you know, like, how do you put a wall up against the things that you ask for? So I just would like for myself, because I trust my ability to get things done, but what I would like to do more of is trust the delivery of the good things that I deserve and the way that the universe and God sends them to me. Same. <laughs> yeah. Because oh. it's easy. People are unhinged and unwell. And there are just a lot of things, unfortunately, that come. Devil, Listen, the devil got gift wrapping ability. Okay? So things be looking real shiny, real new, and real good and turn out to be disasterful is it a word it's a word tonight um so yeah so it's it's not like i'm unreasonable in my reservation of it but i don't want to block blessings or keep myself from the happiness that i so deserve because i'm scared to let things be good i always say um opportunity doesn't go away it just goes to somebody else so like you got to be open you got to be open to be able to receive certain things because the opportunity is it's there in, in abundance. You just got to be willing to take it. Yeah. And it can be uncomfortable at some points in time, but if you're able to take it, you're good to go. But if you're always sitting here looking at the opportunity and be like, yeah, I'll, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. It's not going to go away. It's just going to go to yeah. somebody else who's ready now. And what you waiting for? Like I, all the time people tell me, like, you're impulsive. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, without a shadow of a doubt, I trust my ability to make some shit shake, right? So, like, I'm not worried about jumping out the plane, jumping off the porch, because, baby, if I don't land, I'm a tuck and roll. <laughs> you know, I don't land on my feet. Like, I'm going to figure it out. So, yeah, like, that waiting thing has never been my steez. I've never been somebody who's like, I'll wait. I'll figure it out as I go. And I don't know if it's the areas in me or I don't know. But, like, me, like, I just am always, like, intense with the things that I want, like, I, like what Ariana say? I want it. I got it. I get it, and it always works out. My friend told me the other day. He was like, "You are delusional." I'm like, "I am." <laughs> but like, I feel like delusion is a part of my success. My success story. Like, I decided one day, literally landed a bit. I was like, "Let me get my MBA," and within two weeks, I'd already got accepted into my program, and I was about to start my first semester. Like, I and it's really not even my fault. My whole life, my family, my mother, my parents. Every people, adults, everybody around me has been like, you're so great. You're so smart. You're so capable. You're so so I'm, I'm drinking a Kool-Aid. I believe that I'm great. I believe that I'm smart. I believe that I'm capable. I believe, yes, I believe that I can go into an organization to be the only person who looks like me and outshine everybody. And I do it. I believe in my ability to get things done because I have had nothing but people my whole life telling me that I can do great things. So I go out and do great things. That's why they say that I'm... Every child, which I believe it's every person, but because so many things start with learning in the home, like children, every child is one caring adult away from a successful future. And like, I would not be as successful as I am today without all of the people who continually just, even now, just pour into me, like on Facebook. I don't really use social media like that, but when I get on Facebook, like I still got my teachers from like high school, middle school, even elementary school. They're like, I always knew you were going to be so great, but you're a part of that. Like you, there has never been a time where I didn't think there was something that I couldn't do. Why would I not think that I can do something? Nobody's ever told me that I couldn't. It's the truth. That's why I just try to uplift. Like that's why I show so much love. I try to uplift people. Like, oh, you want to do that? You can do it. <laughs> I ain't saying you do it tomorrow. There's definitely some work you're going to put in. There's some things you're going to have to align, right? Resources, people, things. But you does you can do it. I'm never going to be somebody to tell someone that they can't do anything. Unless it's have daddy hats before you do. That's a fact. <laughs> it's literally a fact. No, I, I'm a, I'm gonna I can attest to to that energy because when I told you I wanted to start the pod, you was you was on board. Yeah. <laughs> There's no nothing is written. Well, some things are written, the Bible, but <laughs> nothing is written, right? Like I wholeheartedly believe. I definitely believe in the multiverse theory. Same. Like I definitely believe in the multiverse. Theory. So, like Same. I personally feel like possibilities are endless because they're existing in other spaces right so like when we have dreams we have aspirations when we have goals when we just have ideas like i feel like it's because they exist and they somewhere. are somewhere else like they are happening somewhere else right 
and we call to them, really we're just calling it from one space to the other. Like wherever it exists there, I'm calling it here. Shout out to Doctor Strange, yo. That. Yeah. <laughs> this is great, right? Like I remember when we first like the first time we ever recorded, it was it was it was a mess. Like it, it just was a mess, but it was a mess because I know the fuck I was doing. Right? Uh this is completely different. I'm 106 of these in. Maybe these mics. <laughs> <It's so> nice. <laughs> but it's things are different. Nice. Things are different. Like I, I, again, I use the word pivot. Like there is times where I was like, I don't know if I want to do the pod anymore. Like I don't know if I want to do it. But I've met so many great people strictly from the pod mm-hmm. um, that I wouldn't have met otherwise. So I can attest to to your great character, and I appreciate you coming on. Mm-hmm. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to talk about before we end? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just thought about that because um, there have so I I say all the time people say that um, comparison is the thief of joy, right? But I'd like to throw another word in the hat. I think it's doubt because nothing feels worse than wanting something so badly. And not feeling like you were capable of creating that thing for yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember I was telling one of my mentees. Um, so I graduated from Bowie State University with a degree in um, political science. And my concentration was international law and public policy, right? But very quickly, I realized that working in the government was not what I wanted to do. The way that I wanted to change the world and shake things up. Um, I was not. <laughs> I yeah. wasn't going to be able to accomplish that the way that I thought that I was. And it was very discouraging, right? But I was bartending at the time. And I was bartending and I was making a shit ton of money. And I'm like, well, isn't this what we went to college for, right? Like, maybe I'll just stick to this path. I'll keep bartending. And bartending took me places that my classroom experiences did not, right? Absolutely. So I just really believe in trusting yourself and just going with it, right? Like, smartly. Like, be, very, be strategic about the things you should do. But there was a time where... Oh, I never forget. I had this uh, professor that I love. I still talk to this day. And uh, my best friend was visiting him um, at our university, and I was in Vegas. And she FaceTimed me, and I'm talking to him. He's like, What are you doing now? So good to see you. I was like, Oh, I'm in Vegas. I'm doing this. And he's like, Oh. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, like, what do you mean? And he was like, That's disappointing. I'm like, What do you mean he's disappointing? I'm making 10 bands a month. And he was like, And? He's like, you're supposed to be changing the world. You're supposed to be writing policy. You're supposed to be traveling, like helping people. Like you're just, you're Chilling. wasting your potential. And that killed me. Oh my gosh. I was so sick. I cried for days. And then I remember I was at the dealership and there was this lady that I sold a car to. It was after I stopped bartending. And um, she was crying. She's like, oh my gosh, nobody would help me. Nobody would listen. Nobody would do this. Da, 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 da. And like now she had a car. She could get a better job. She could take care of her kids better. <laughs> And I remember my dad was like, you changed her life. (laughs) You made her life better. You know what I mean? He was like, you are not responsible for the picture and the plans that people created for your life. Right. And you don't have to do things on such a big scale. Like you can change the lives of the people that you interact with on a daily basis. The people that you see in passing, the people that you help here. Right. Like your ability to reach people and to change the world is with every step you take and every breath you breathe. And I think that is so important for people to understand because it is easy to get discouraged when you feel like people don't support you or that your success doesn't look the way that you thought that it would. But we just got to take a step back and really just kind of get off of our high horse that everything doesn't look the same to everybody. And as long as you're open to the possibilities of what opportunities can bring, there's no one way to get to a destination, right? One of my favorite books talks about that. It's called Siddhartha. It's something that's loosely based off of the life of Buddha. And one of the themes in that is, um, if I'm a doctor, did I become a doctor because in kindergarten I fell and I scraped my knee and somebody gave me a Band-Aid and I was like, wow, I want to help people. So high school, college, everything like was the path to become a doctor. Or maybe did I want to be a teacher? And, you know, I taught people and then, hey, I decided that I was going to be a golfer, a pro golfer, and just like did all these different things and still ended up being a doctor. Right. And I believe it's the latter. I believe that no matter what we do, our lives are always going to go to the point where we're supposed to be. So I just at this point, am happy to go on the journey because I trust that um, I'm going to be successful, continue to be successful. I trust that I'm going to live a life full of love, happiness and light. And I'm excited about how I get there and like the, you know, the view on the way. So yeah, don't, 
don't get discouraged if you feel like the things that you want to do are not working the way they're supposed to because you don't know how that's supposed to go. Facts. Success is not a destination. It's a journey. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, it was again, it was great having you on. Uh, we got to do this more. Not 77 episodes later. <laughs> huh? 60? 68? 66 128 I'd just like to read a quote <laughs> <laughs> It says What do you have planned this weekend Calvin <laughs> I said It depends on the day and the time I'm in grad school when I get my work assignments done on the weekends That was December 6 My response was the response that I received from Calvin was Wednesday. What day was Wednesday? December 6th, Wednesday was... February 21st. People in the audience, <clears throat> comment below. <laughs> we just talked about how... We just talked about how things are supposed to happen exactly when they're supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> what you're not going to do is sit here and try to make it seem like I'm the reason that that didn't happen that way. No, nah, we gotta. We're gonna. We're gonna have to do a couple more of these, yeah. for sure. It's um, a pleasure. Yeah, this is cool. This like sometimes when I have like sometimes when I am on a podcast with someone that like I know more than someone that I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, it was just. It was great having you on. Yeah, it was great being here. Um, actually, that's mean. I'm not gonna say. What I'm gonna say. But. <laughs> say it. You said no, everything else. I, I think the great thing about your podcast is that there are some people who are very strategic <laughs> with their guests, right? They only want someone who's going to um, increase their following or maybe follow a certain um, guidelines of the, the type of thing that they want to have. And I think that you are very graceful with the people that you allow to come on and just have a platform and have a voice and, and share their experiences. All those people are not interesting, <laughs> right? And, and that's okay. Because interesting is subjective, right? Absolutely. 100%. Intelligence isn't subjective, but interesting <laughs> is. So, <laughs> you know, I just applaud you for not being... <laughs> what? <sighs> is this thing on? <laughs> you gotta go You gotta go watch some other episodes. We've had some really, really, really fascinating people you know, on. We've had some really great people on. It's like some, this. some not so, you know? I mean... Some people can't come back on. That's just a fact. But yeah, just you gotta you gotta go through the the rabbit hole. There's 106 of these things. All right, Risa T. <laughs> 106, baby. Yeah, I've I caught quite a few. <laughs> Even if I haven't said anything, I've caught quite a few. Cool. <laughs> this is the Can We Talk podcast episode 106. Can we- you guys enjoy the rest of your night and thank you for listening. Goodbye. Bye.